Hello, this is Daniel Povey, and today's question is, how is Amazon teaching speech recognizers new words? Here's the model. Okay, okay. Can we actually scroll up just a little bit? Uh, okay, so so this this is a blog post about their SLT paper. I'm afraid I haven't read the SLT paper, but I've had a look through the blog post. Uh, now, I think this isn't just a random paper. I heard from another channel that this is something that they're actually using in their product somehow to uh, to enable recognizing new words. So th this is always a problem that we have with, with deep neural net based methods that you train a system, but then it's really hard to add new words or to like boost the probability of new words. Uh, now, technically, this, these systems can recognize any any words uh, in principle because uh, they usually don't have an explicit vocabulary of words, but they have their vocabulary as little word pieces, and they can combine them to form any word. But the problem is that if a word hasn't been seen in the training set, it normally will not successfully recognize it. So. Now, like most models these days, it seems their basic model is some kind of uh, transformer. Can we scroll down a little, kind of a little bit? Okay, okay, that's it. So, so it can, yeah, look at the blue thing towards the left. It says conformer encoder. I think that's basically the uh, the the core of of the model. A conformer is just a variety of transformer that has a convolutional module in it uh so so it looks like what what they do is they 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 probably first decode with ctc which is very easy to do and then okay so it says training only with, with that dash line around it. it seems in training time they have some kind of transformer decoder that's a pretty common thing to do as a kind of regularization, but it seems they're not using that in uh, in their production because that's super slow to decode. And yeah, and, and instead they're just using the CTC output. Uh, but but then they're they're having a problem of of uh, how to adapt the system to new words. So it seems that what they're doing is quite is quite complicated. But basically the the input to the system, uh, we could go to the bottom right, they had this entity list. So it looks like the RNN for each item in, in the entity list, it extracts like a fixed length vector embedding. And then they have some kind of, uh, they, they have some kind of attention where, uh, some kind of averaged embedding over all of the layers of the uh, of the conformer acts as the query, and then the keys and values come from these RNN embeddings of the words. And then basically, it, it looks like the output of that just gets added to the uh, output of the conformer. So, so it's kind of biasing the. Uh, biasing the output. Now, I, I've i actually, uh, I'm actually getting interested in this kind of thing myself. Uh, the, the kind of thing where there's some extra side information that comes into the ASR. Uh, personally, I'm more interested in training this with the model. They didn't want to retrain the model, probably because the model is trained on like a million hours and it's too slow. Uh, but Personally, I'm I'm more interested in having these extra inputs uh, during training time as well. Uh, but this is, you know, this this is a cool method still, and it seems that uh, that they're actually using it in production. I'm I'm sure that I, I imagine that eventually the whole field is going to start moving towards having auxiliary inputs as some kind of text. So it's it's actually a slight. Uh, inversion of the the way that they do it with uh, attention decoders because in, in attention decoders the uh the acoustic encoder is just it has self-attention 
and then you have cross attention in the decoder. But here we're doing it a little bit oppositely that there's self at, uh, basically the, the, well, the way I want to do it anyway is that the acoustic encoder, we augment that with cross attention from some kind of prompting text. Uh, and then we'll decode with something that doesn't require attention, something like RNNT or CTC. So yeah, I think this is uh, this is a cool paper and worth uh, looking into more. I'm sorry that I haven't I haven't actually read the paper in detail. I'm actually more interested in the general idea of having attention from some kind of biasing list or prompt text. The specific way they did it. I think it's slightly constrained by the fact that they have a really big model that they didn't want to retrain. Personally, I I would uh, probably add attention, add cross attention into those conformer blocks, and that's what I plan to do uh, in some future work. Okay, okay. so Caldi hasn't implemented anything like this. Uh, not yet. Well, so I mean, yeah, next gen Caldi, like in Icefall, we we plan to do something that's a little bit like this. We've had this plan for some time, but right right now we uh, uh, the the way that we want to train it requires uh, like different differently prepared data than how the data is normally prepared. So basically, we have to do a certain amount of work on the data preparation side before we can train this type of system because we need to get appropriate prompt text. So yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Sure. Bye bye. bye. Bye.